In a previous video, we saw how some consonants are voiced, that is, they're pronounced with vibration of the vocal cords, and others are voiceless or unvoiced, that is, they're pronounced with no vibration of the vocal cords. We also saw how, in Russian, most voiced consonants at the end of a word are devoiced, that is, they sound like their voiceless counterparts, even though the spelling doesn't change. And besides, at the end of a word, there's another common situation when we'll hear this devoicing of a voiced consonant. First, let's consider what happens when two or more consonants come together in a cluster. It's fine to have two voiceless consonants together. Utka, utka, stol, stol. And it's no problem to have two voiced consonants together. Тогда, тогда, здесь, здесь. But Russian does not like to have voiced and voiceless consonants right next to each other. So when you see a voiced consonant followed by a voiceless one in spelling, the voiceless character of that second one will carry back to the first, causing it to devoice, so that now that originally voiced consonant will sound like its voiceless counterpart, even though, again, the spelling usually won't reflect this. Listen for how the voiceless k in this word makes the voiced b sound like a voiceless p. Yupka, yupka. Unlike when we say vodka in English, in Russian, the letter d in this word will be pronounced as if it were a voiceless t. Vodka, vodka. In the same way, the voiced z devoices to sound like sh. Ложка, ложка. And in this word, the voiced v will sound like a voiceless f. Все, все. This is called assimilation because the first sound is becoming more similar to the second. And sometimes this devoicing can even jump across word boundaries, especially since prepositions are normally pronounced as if they were the beginning of the following word. Pay special attention to the pronunciation of v, meaning in or into, in these phrases. If the next word begins with a voiceless consonant, be sure to pronounce the v as its voiceless counterpart, f. В Сочи, в Сочи, в Томске, в Томске. But if the next word begins with a voiced consonant or a vowel, then the v will be voiced. В Москве, в Москве, в Омске, в Омске. Now, some of these consonant clusters can be challenging for native speakers of English, and a pretty common mistake here is to always pronounce the preposition v as voiced, and then maybe to put a little vowel sound before the next word. So you get something like visochi. But we want to be sure to avoid this tendency. Let's listen again to how the native speaker just pronounces a short f that leads smoothly and directly into the next word. Vsochi. Vsochi. You may have noticed how it's always the following consonant that affects the consonant that precedes it. It's always going backwards. This is also true when the last consonant of a cluster is voiced, and the preceding one was voiceless. So the voiced quality of the following consonant changes the preceding one to voiced. Listen for how the letter s sounds like a voiced z in this word because it's followed by the voiced d. Сделать. Сделать. And here, the voiceless t of the word vot becomes voiced when it's followed by d. So we hear what sounds like two d sounds. Вот дочь. Вот дочь. As we saw before, though, there are four consonants that don't get involved in this voicing and devoicing business. So L, M, N, and R don't generally become devoiced. Listen for how the L here is voiced even before the voiceless K. Polka. Polka. And these same four letters do not cause a preceding consonant to become voiced. So you can hear how the T in OT remains voiceless even before the voiced M. От меня. От меня. And we should add one more exception, the letter V. Even though it does become devoiced at the end of a word, Столов. it does not cause a preceding voiceless consonant to become voiced. So in this word, for example, the S remains voiceless even though it's followed by the voiced V. Связь. Связь. Summing up. Regardless of the spelling, most Russian consonant clusters are pronounced as only voiced or only voiceless consonants. When you see a combination of voiced and voiceless consonants in spelling, 
the character of the last consonant sound in the cluster influences the preceding consonants. L, M, N, and R, though, are always voiced, even before voiceless consonants. And one last exception, V does not cause voicing of a preceding voiceless consonant.